Have you ever driven down a road thinking you were heading in one direction only to wind up someplace else? Years ago, as a reporter, I learned quickly and much to my frustration that there was country just a few miles outside the city of Lansing, Michigan State Capitol, where I worked. Country, plain and simple. Just a few short miles away from the seat of government, the landscape quickly turned from urban gray to rural green. Rows and rows of neatly manicured fields of golden wheat. Corn as high as an elephant's eye and lots and lots of unmarked roads. I'd go out on an assignment and I would get directions from people like, just turn left at Old Country Road and go eight tenths of a mile, and then turn right at Nelson's Barn. Mind you, this was in the days before GPS and Google Maps. Now, I kept a Thomas guide in my car, but what good is a road guide, road guide when you don't know what road you've gotten yourself onto in the first place. So one of the many things I learned then was to give myself extra time just to get lost and to find my way again. Because often I thought the road was taking me in one direction when in reality I was headed in another place altogether. And that brings us to today, to Palm Sunday. We know today's story so well, so that it is easy for us to think, just like those in Jerusalem that day, that Palm Sunday is taking us someplace else, when we're really on a different road, a road we might not have chosen, a road we may not have planned on, perhaps an unwelcome road. That's the point of what we do today, we began outside waving palm branches like the crowds when Jesus rode into Jerusalem. They were ready for change. Oppression weighed heavily upon them, like the Egyptian captivity from which their ancestors had been delivered. It was Passover week. Emotions were running high. The people were hungry for deliverance from another tyrant, from the Roman Empire. And Jesus had fed people healed people, raised them from the dead. He had rebuked the Pharisees, confounded the theologians, and captivated the hearts of people yearning to be free. So when they saw him, they took him for the triumphant king who had come to free them. And they took up the cry, the one we echoed, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. But the road Jesus was on that day wasn't headed to a castle or a fortress. And today's Passion Gospel reminds us where that road led. I am holding in my hand a nail. It is also a reminder of where the road led that day. This nail, along with a basket full of others in the back in the narthex, have all already been blessed. And I invite you, as you leave today, to take a nail from one of the ushers and let it represent that thing that you need to leave at the cross, that thing you need to hand over to Jesus, that you've been affected by or working on your whole life but haven't been able to resolve on your own, even with your best efforts or intentions. Guilt, fear, shame, doubt, betrayal, disappointment, envy, the need to be perfect, the need to judge, pride, isolation, hardness of heart, anger, grief, regret, bitterness, injustice, hatred, despair, resentment. A missing piece that might, you think, might make you whole. A broken re relationship that is in need of reconciliation, perhaps with someone in our families, at our workplaces, maybe even here in church. What is that thing in your life you need to leave at the cross? What do you hold on to that causes pain, 
sorrow, grief. I invite you to grab hold of one of these nails today and come back on Good Friday and pound it into the cross that will be here at the altar, the cross of Jesus Christ. He knew where the road was taking him that Palm Sunday so long ago, and he stayed with it anyway. From the gates of Jerusalem, through the streets of the city, into the halls of judgment, down the dark alleys of hatred, out to the other side, to the place of the skull. He travels our own roads with us, and he promises to stay with us. That is the road of this week. And I invite you to take a nail and hold on to it all this coming week. Feel its weight. Keep it in your pocket. It just might poke you. It may feel a lot more rigid than you had thought. Hold on to this nail. Let it live with you this entire week. And then I invite you to bring it back on Good Friday and pound it into the cross and leave it there. Leave it all here and wait for Easter morning. Amen.